Jacob's girlfriend was back there, and they were having an intense conversation, shit-talking religion. That's what they said when I walked up, we're shit-talking religion. Yeah. Do you want to join? So I asked the only question that came to mind immediately, and that was, uh, any religion in particular, or what, like, what are we shooting for here, you know what I mean? And then our head, lovely headliner goes into this amazing story, and I was so enthralled, I had to have that moment where I thought, Fuck, those mushrooms I took were way higher dose than I thought. Oh my God. Oh my God. I was staring at him to the point where he was staring back at me, telling the story like, what's this guy's deal? Like, ugh. Yuck. But yes, I do run the only open mic in town anymore through the grace of God, hard work, and not being petty about comedy and money. Right? Yeah. 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 Not the hardest equation in the world, I don't think. But, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, a lot of these guys that you're going to see tonight come out. You know, if you guys don't have anything going on on Wednesdays, it's where you can get to see comics trying out new stuff. It's kind of like a writer's room. Uh, it's a lot of fun. That's, uh, that's my TED Talk. Let's do some jokes, right? Let's do some jokes, right? Uh, I don't like to get political about anything. And, like, I really don't want to talk about it on stage or off after I do this joke. So just know that. <laughs> yeah, when all of that shit in Israel was going down, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I thought I was having a fever dream, right? I look up on the news, and there are terrorists parasailing onto a music festival, taking hostages. And I will not lie to you guys, that sounds like every shitty airport book some writer writes every year, you know what I mean? Some guy named, like... Tor Hammerdick is gonna have to come in and save the world again. You know what I mean? Like, I thought I was living in a fever dream. Turns out it's a full-blown nightmare. But, you know, I wrote that one shitty joke about it, so we're all good there, we're all good. No, we're all good. No, doing mushrooms and comedy, you get to do all kinds of interesting things. I'll give you uh, two examples of some very interesting stuff I found myself in, got to find some comedy, right? Anyone in here ever done hot yoga? Yeah. yeah, a couple hot yoga people? Okay, cool. You guys will understand this perfectly. For those of you that have never done hot yoga, it is regular yoga, but it's 109 degrees in that room. Yeah, 109 degrees. That's torture. That's not yoga. That's torture. You know what I mean? That's crazy shit. But I was asked by a friend, hey, do you want to come do hot yoga? And I said, you know what? I wrestled in high school. I wrestled a little bit in college. What could hot yoga possibly bring that I haven't already experienced, right? So I dressed up for the occasion in my tightest tank top, my shortest John Stockton inspired shorts. I grabbed $30 and we went out to hot yoga. Right? Yeah. First thing they ask when you get in there, you guys, is they go, do you have a mat? And I said, oh, I didn't know I needed a mat. And the guy behind the counter just looks at me like a piece of shit and he just goes, ugh. Grabs a communal mat, throws it to me. Got my communal mat, perfect. We go into this room. It's very quiet. There's music playing softly, it's very hot in there, right? And you lay out, you grab your little bit of space, then without any warning whatsoever, you're doing circuits of things your body has never fucking done in its entire fucking life. Just one after another, boom, 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 boom. And I won't lie to you guys, I felt like I was gonna die. I thought I was gonna straight up, I was gonna die. At one point, I'm doing warrior pose for about the 18th time. I am full eight mile, you guys. Knees weak, arms are heavy, just, oh my God. Oh, just stay on your feet, Connor, like a man. Stay on your feet. And this adorable woman, middle-aged woman, she was crushing it, by the way. She leans into me and she goes, 
are you sure you're doing okay? That's code for this is all bad, right? Like all of this is not going well at all, right? We're gonna have to call someone for you. I'm at a point where there's no language. I'm just going like this, right? I can feel sweat pouring from my head through my disgusting beard, just down my tight tank top, out of my John Stockton shorts, and it's pooling on this communal mat that they'll give any one of you guys when you don't have a mat either. You know, just pooling. And then 90 minutes goes by, I'm feeling like a Viking. I made it, I made it. And they have one last question for you. Total curveball. They go, does anyone want a cold towel? Palm up, cold towel, palm down, no cold towel. I didn't know what to do. I thought that sounded nice, put my palm up. They put a cold towel directly in my hand. I will not lie, these towels were icy cold. They smelled like lemon and eucalyptus. It was like a dream. <laughs> this is my first time, you guys. I didn't know what to do with the cold towel, so I did the first thing I thought would help, and I put it right on my balls. Oh my, oh my God. Oh, I am from Chico, you guys. I am from Chico, I have spent good money on drugs that make you trip out. 90 minutes in the sweat lodge doing torture stretches and an icy cold towel on your balls. I was talking to deposed kings, dead relatives. It was, oh. I keep going back. I, I keep going back. Oh my God. And then I'll leave you with this. My favorite part is when I, when I started telling people the story, a lot of my friends all had the exact same question. They said, well, was the teacher hot? <laughs> Reasonable question, was the teacher hot? And I tell him the same thing I'm gonna tell you. I don't know, his name was Alan, but he was muscled up, you guys. Thank you, my name is Connor Fitzgerald, I really appreciate it. Give it up for Jake.